Welcome back, everyone, to what is now week five of our Profiles in Faith series. As most of you know, we've spent the last four weeks from Noah and through the patriarchs and the time of the judges and then on through kings. And, and now we fast forward to the time of the birth of Jesus. We're going to spend a couple of days, maybe this week, on this story, and then we're going to go on into the ministry of Jesus and the ministry of the church thereafter. But for the next few days, I want to spend a little time with some of those familiar characters of the Christmas narrative, as well as a few of those who are not perhaps quite as familiar as the rest. To start, however, I want to look at the story of Zechariah. Zechariah was a priest from the line of Aaron, and at the time, the, du the duties of presenting offerings at the temple were reserved solely for those families whose lines descended from Aaron. As the duty of serving as priest in the temple rotated between each of those families, they would cast lots to see which men in the family would actually go in to make the offering to God, and Zechariah in this particular case had been chosen. He was serving as a priest in the temple as the story unfolds in the first chapter of the gospel according to Luke. This starts with verse 8. Once when he, that he being Zechariah, was serving as priest before God and his section was on duty, he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and offer incense. Now at the time of the incense offering, the whole assembly of the people was praying outside. Then there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified and fear overwhelmed him, but the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear a son, and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn their hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, How will I know that this is so? For I'm an old man, and my wife is getting on in years. The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring this good news to you. But now, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will become mute, unable to speak until the day these things occur. Now, for those of you who have been listening to this series all along, this may sound a bit familiar because the story of Zechariah and Elizabeth plays out very similar to that which we saw with Sarah and Abraham many generations before. Late in life, Elizabeth barren, and in comes God's promise of a child to be born, a child they'd wanted for decades, but never had. Now, you'll recall that Sarah laughed. In the face of such an absurd promise, Sarah laughed at God. Zechariah was a little more direct with his doubting, and he responded to Gabriel essentially with the question, how is this even possible? How could this happen to me? When we encountered this story with Sarah and Abraham, we talked about the absurdity, the laughability of God's promises. With Zechariah, however, my heart is drawn into its reminder that God's time and our time are often not the same. 
I don't think it's a stretch to say that patience is wearing a bit thin right now. From the protests that are erupting in state capitals around our country to the cabin fever that's welling up within those of us tied so much to our homes, it's not hard to see that people are beyond ready to move past the struggles of these days. We're tired, we're frustrated, we've been at this for a month and now we're told that we have a month or maybe even more still ahead. The resolution isn't coming in the time and the manner we've prayed for. And all of that stuff combined makes it that much harder to wait with trust on God. I honestly think that one of the most difficult realities of faith is that our prayers are rarely answered in the manner and or the time frame that we have in mind. God hears our prayers. God hears our cries. God hears our longing for his presence in our lives. And God is always there. But more often than not, his answer to our prayers is not the answer we anticipated and or does not come in the time that we expected. What's important to remember about these stories, however, that of Sarah and Abraham, as well as that of Zechariah and Elizabeth, is that in time, their prayers were answered. In time, God responded to their cries with an unimaginable grace. In time, God entered in in miraculous ways and ushered them to an even greater tomorrow. In time, God responded, and in time, God will again. I don't think it's a stretch to say that patience is wearing a bit thin right now, and the prolonging of it all just makes it harder and harder to wait with trust on God. I can assure you, however, that God is here. I can say without a shadow of a doubt that God hears our prayers. I know in the depths of my heart that God is at work in us. God is at work around us and God is at work in all of these circumstances that we face. We're reminded of that again and again. Countless stories of our faith, of our scripture, remind us of the miraculous work of God in our lives. There are a few stories, however, that remind us that that miraculous work doesn't always come in the time or in the manner that we hope for, ask for, or expect. God is at work. God is with us. God's love never fails. Sometimes, however, like Zechariah, we find that we have to wait a bit before we can truly see and know that which God has been doing all along. Let's join in prayer together. God of love, we stand in awe of the wonders of your works. As we wait, however, we sometimes find ourselves impatient, anxious, looking at the seemingly endless days of this current crisis and struggling to wait for your work within it. Help us, God, to set our sights on that which you are doing now. To set our sights on the comfort you provide, the peace you give, and the love you share over and above the resolution we long for. Help us, God, to look beyond that anxious anticipation of things being resolved that we might feel your presence right here, right now, at work in us, at work through us, 
and at work around us this day and always. For we pray it in his name. Amen. Blessings to all of you. I pray you have a wonderful afternoon, and I will see you here tomorrow.